this kind of like your map, and I'm going to teach you to read the map today. Okay. So I think the first thing we'll do is, um, can I get this off the screen now? Can I can I take it down? Um, because we're going to need both boards. Where we're going to start is just this first bit. It starts off nice and gentle. Okay. So part one. Part one. The first thing I want to do is to say, take that guy. I'll turn the projector off in one second. We're going to look at this guy. Oops. And we want to know the co coefficient of x to the power of 2m. That's what we're looking for. Okay? So have a look. This is very simple to just like stock standard binomial theorem. Okay? So if I consider this, probably the quickest way to get to this is to say that the general term, and by the way, I like to say the phrase general term before I write T of K because as you've seen, sometimes textbooks will mean T of K is the term, other you know, little t is the co I just think it's a bit confusing. So just um, say that again. Um, I would not. I don't think that's a, a, like I've never I've never seen that acronym ever. So I don't think it's like a recognizable. Oh, of course. Um, and it'll only take you a second. What I'm working out is each one of these terms is in exactly the same format. So what is the kth term going to be? Okay. So I'll give you a clue. It starts with the okay. So there are going to be like it's which row of Pascal's triangle am I on? And the answer is I'm on the four nth row. Uh, for and choose whichever term along you're going. And then you're going to have uh, some number of these and some number of these. Okay, so which one would you like me to have as the k term and which one would you like me to be 4 and minus k? Okay, so I'll go x to the k, which means there are going to be this many one terms hanging on. Okay, how's that look? That's the general term? So therefore, what they want is the coefficient of the x to the 2n term, right? So therefore, I could say c to n is going to be for n c to n. There is the desired power of x that I was after, and that's how many ones I will have. Okay. So there we go. I've got the bits that I need. You can see that these are going to be inconsequential. They just want the coefficient. So I could say therefore the coefficient. Is this? Ta-da! Okay, so there we go. That was the first part. Eyes back to the question. Part one is over. Part two is where it starts to look um, worse, but hold on to it. I'm going to write this down in a second, but I just want you to read it with me. They say show that, and they've got a new seemingly unrelated expansion over there on the left. And then this weird signotation thing on the right. Okay, so that's what we want to show. Before I get to that, before I get to that, Isn't I notice. That square? Say it again. Isn't that the first one square? Yes, yes. So you're already starting, I hope, to see this. This is the reason why it's a part one, part two, part three thing. When I have a look at this, in fact, I'm going to write it down, and maybe you want to do it as well. Part two, what am I required to prove? Um, you've got this thing here 1 plus x squared plus 2x to the power of 2n. And then you've got this signal notation on the right hand side. 2 and minus k, right? Yep. Okay, good. Now, I'm very, very pleased that some of you have noticed hey, 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 this inside the brackets is 1 plus x all squared. 1 plus x all squared. And if there's a 2 up there, then that 2 and the 2n are going to become. 4n, right? So immediately you have a clue. Okay, there's going to be a connection here. Good. File it away though, because have a look at what they're asking you to do over here, right? Do you see that this expansion is from 0 to 2n, right? So they don't want you to change this to a 4n just yet. They still want you to think about this as there are going to be 2n plus 1 terms. So leave that power as what it is. The second thing I notice has two halves to it. Number one, um, you notice that it was 1 plus x all squared. However, it's written in a weird order. It's written in a weird order. Look at this. Who writes quadratics like this? Who writes the x squared term in the middle? That's kind of weird. Okay, that's the first thing I noticed. The second thing I notice is, what is this about? There's, a, there's 
I'm not used to having multiple X terms in there. Like there should be one X term, and then there should be a whatever the other term is, like a constant, right? So there's an X, and there's an X plus two. Now, I'm pointing both of these things out because they are two sides of the same coin. The X and the X plus two come from that right there. Do you see that? You see that's X times X plus two. That's really X times X plus two, okay? So even though we've first noted, okay, there's a clear connection between this guy and this guy, I'm not gonna use that just yet. Keep it asleep, we are gonna use it. The bigger connection between these two things is that I've gotta tease this out here. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say um, 1 plus x squared plus 2x to the power of 2n. This is my left-hand side, right? I should say that. The left-hand side, how am I going to rewrite it so that I can get to here? Yep. Um, can you go like 1 plus and then take x out mm -hmm. and then x plus 2? So then you have a binomial. Okay, fantastic. So this is my new binomial. That's not a binomial. It's a trinomial. It's got three things. But having put these together, it's like that whole product. There we go. There's my one plus something to somehow. Okay, is that all right? And essentially, I'm going to go just like I did before. I'm just going to state what this is going to be um, as the binomial theorem tells me, right? So this is the sum of from k equals naught to 2n. Okay, pause for a second. Do you remember, um, five, six lines ago, come in, take a seat. I asked you, okay, I'm about to write the general term. Right? And the general term, of course, is the thing that you're adding up in your sigma notation, okay? And I said to you, well, which one should be the x and which one should be the one? Now you, because I trained you to do it, chose the one to have the messy weirdo power on it because then it simplifies out and it's nice and easy. Right? But watch what happens if I do that here. Okay? If, for instance, I say, okay, I want um, there to be the x, x plus 2. I want there, don't write this down by the way. I want there to be 2n of those. Sorry, k of those. Which means that I have 2n minus k of those. Yeah? Now that will be nice and simple. It's just not what I want. Right? Because look back, look back. This is the result I'm trying to prove. And for some reason that is not clear to me yet. <laughs> They've chosen to put the messy power on the x terms, okay? So this is not going to get me to the result I want. So I'm going to abandon that now. Good morning, come in. Um, that's why I asked you not to write this down. Instead of making that the k powers going up, I'm going to make this the 2n minus k, because that's where I can see if they want me to go. So I'm going to write that, 2n minus k times 1 to the k. Because, of course, you don't, don't skip that. This is a proof, right? It's not trivial at all. Um, and now pretty much I'm there. Do you see? I'm pretty much there. Um, I'm, I can write this down because it's x to the power of 2 and minus k. And then there's an x plus 2 to the power of 2 and minus k. Okay? Yep. Say that again? Oh, I just forgot to write it. Oh, hold on a second. Have I? Yeah, I just forgot to write it here. Because it's such an easy thing to forget to write. Okay. Better? We're better? Yeah. Okay, so therefore your final line will be 1 plus x squared plus 2x to the power of 2n equals, and I'm just going to write the result as required. But this time I'll write it properly with the binomial coefficient in it. Yes? Could you be lazy and just say equals RHS from that point on? Yeah, yeah, you probably could. Okay, I'm done. Um, you happy? That's part two.